evaluation and classification of acetabulum fractures. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series version 5, slides by Dr. Laura Blum and Jeffrey Chad Martin. I'm Saki Brahman and I'm going to be narrating these. These are our objectives and we'll go through them one by one. So in this video, we're going to focus really on the intact acetabulum and go through standard radiographic evaluation. And you have to make sure you are able to obtain and understand standard views as well as identify and understand Letronel's six radiographic landmarks. Okay. So standard radiographic evaluation is typically an AP radiograph of the pelvis and then Jude views. So on the uh, standard AP, a good AP really should be centered on the symphysis. And you can see here how you can draw a line down the spinous processes of the, sp of the lower uh, lumbar spine. And if you drop that straight down, um, that should then intersect through the pubic symphysis. So if you see that, you probably have reasonable uh, rotation of the pelvis uh, and should be an adequate film. Um, there should be neutral pelvic tilt in that the coccyx is about one to three centimeters above the symphysis. And you want to look to see that the um, obturator foramen are roughly symmetric. And, and you know, you're going to sort of, you know, you're looking at sort of this shape here and it should be roughly symmetric, right? Now, Jude views are oblique images oriented 45 degrees to the coronal plane. So you literally tilt the patient. Um, <clears throat> usually you, you can use like a wedge block or something. And you tilt the patient to one side and then you tilt the patient to the other side and then you shoot uh, straight down uh, with your um, x-ray beam. So you will get uh, images something like this. Now these are don't look like radiographs. These look like so-called... Um, like uh, radiographic uh, um, reconstructions from a CT scan. That's what I think these are. And a lot of times if you have CT scan images, you can sort of reconstruct them to look like uh, there are plain radiographs. Nevertheless, this is a very nice illustration to show you the two views. So um, you uh, want to make sure on, <clears throat> on your, if we're looking at the right hip uh, in this image here, um, you want to make sure in your obturator oblique view, and that's this view here. Okay, this is an obturator oblique view of the right hip. And in this case, you are sort of taking that obturator foramen and you know, making it look like that, right? So you have the patient tilted to their left and you're shooting. And uh, on the x-ray down here, this is an iliac oblique of the right hip. Okay, so here you have the patient 45 degrees tilted towards their right, and the iliac fossa, or the iliac bone here, is kind of turned, so you're looking at it on foss. Um, now, the obturator oblique of the right hip is actually an iliac oblique of the left hip, if done properly, right? And then an iliac oblique of the left hip is an obturator oblique I'm sorry, iliac oblique of the right hip is an obturator oblique of the left hip here, right? So here's the left hip, and here we go. This is our obturator oblique image with the obturator ring on FOSS. In general, um, if you have a um, well-rotated film, the tip of the coccyx, which is probably right about here, should be centered on the cotyloid fossa, and we'll go over that. So here's your obturator oblique, um, kind of um, zoomed in here a little bit. Um, the, uh, the image should really uh, show you a nice outline of the obturator ring. And some of the radiographic uh, things you want to look for here are um, the uh, posterior wall. And here you can see there's actually a nice posterior wall fracture. And that uh, is uh, shown in the uh, purple line. And you also see the anterior column very nicely, or at least a portion of the anterior column shown by the yellow line. Okay, so these are some of your standard radiographic lines as opposed to the iliac oblique. Okay, so on this side, the, the right hip this is an iliac oblique with the patient tilted towards the patient's right. Okay, and 
um, you sort of are getting an on-foss view of the iliac wing. Okay, and in this case, the obturator foramen here becomes um, somewhat not visible because it's turned all the way on its side. Now this shows the posterior column in blue, the anterior wall or portion of the anterior wall shown in that uh, orange line, and then the iliac wing in profile. So when you have um, iliac wing fracture lines, you're gonna see them very nicely here. Um, and you will see later when we, in the next video, when we go through the different fracture types, how these lines um, can get disrupted and you can interpret fracture patterns. All right, so let's go through those uh, radiographic landmarks. So let's turn out six radiographic landmarks are the iliopectineal line, the ilioischial line, the teardrop, the acetabular roof, the anterior wall, the posterior wall. Now, you can see all of these on an AP pelvic radiograph. So the iliopectineal line radiographically is one line, and you can see it outlined in that yellow um, marker anteriorly, that, or I should say the anterior three quarters of it, um, from about here to here is the pelvic brim. And if you picked up a bone model, that pelvic brim um, uh, correlates to uh, that line. But posteriorly, it's actually the roof of the greater sciatic notch, like this, this area here. So if you pick up a bone model, you'll see that that pelvic brim, which is here, actually, it kind of projects probably out here. Um, but you don't get that radiographic line, and you happen to get this sort of, you know, pelvic brim here, greater sciatic notch roof here, and they coalesce to form what looks like one uh, line on a radiograph, and we call that the iliopectineal line. Now, the ilioischial line is shown here in blue, and that's created by a beam tangent to the posterior portion of the quadrilateral surface. Um, you know, mainly like you know, this area here. And then you can see that it um, forms a portion reaching down towards the inferior pubic ramus and then superiorly towards the sciatic notch also. But the majority of it is this um, quadrilateral surface and uh, it's a good marker for the posterior column. Now the teardrop, is a radiographic phenomenon. Okay, there it is shown in red. You can see it on the contralateral side. It is not, you know, you don't pick up a pelvis and say, here's a teardrop, or look at a pelvis during a case and say, there's the teardrop. It's a radiographic phenomenon. Again, um, the medial limb of that teardrop is formed by the obturator canal and then the anterior inferior portion of the quadrilateral surface. Um, the lateral limb is the inferior aspect of the uh, anterior wall. Uh, and this is, um, uh, the, the teardrop kind of represents a uh, maintained relationship between the two columns. And when that's disrupted, oftentimes um, it's indicative of a disruption between the columns. So the acetabular roof is another line, also known as the sourceal. Sourceal is a word for eyebrow. And uh, it's created by a beam tangent to the subchondral bone in the superior portion or the weight-bearing portion of the acetabulum and uh, represents a superior articular surface, which um, prognostically is, is very important to be able to identify and to restore. So the acetabulum is slightly introverted. So the anterior wall in orange appears a little bit more medial because of that introversion than the posterior wall uh, border shown in purple. Uh, the anterior wall is also a little bit more horizontal than the posterior wall as shown in, the, in, the, in those two lines. And the radiographic landmark for the anterior wall is contiguous with the superior border of the obturator foramen. So here are all those lines on the standard AP image. So we're going to pause there. We'll pick up with the next section in the next video.